When I was 14 and playing Pokemon Black, I faced a tough choice between Archon and Tortuga as my fossil Pokemon. Luckily, my friend Trevor gave me some information describing Tortuga as a tank and Archon as a glass cannon. While I understood the concept of a tank, I was left wondering what is a glass cannon? As a trope, in game design, a glass cannon at the surface level is something that leverages poor defense in favor of high offense. Many easy examples come to mind, like the Sorcerer in Dungeons & Dragons, the Sniper in Team Fortress 2, and Red Decks in Magic the Gathering. More on that later. The aspect of calculated and accepted vulnerability is interesting to me because the double-edged sword of rewarding and punishing narrow mastery is prevalent in other walks of life. In this video, I'd like to highlight my favorite deck archetype in Magic the Gathering, centered around my favorite creature, Kiln Fiend, the ultimate glass cannon creature in Magic the Gathering. Kiln Fiend is a creature that grows in power tremendously when you play instants or sorceries, but as a drawback, does not grow in toughness, making it vulnerable. To pilot a Kiln Fiend deck, you must have timing in which your opponent can't prevent damage by killing the Kiln Fiend or blocking it. Some refer to this as Christmas Land Magic because every deck can do well if your opponent doesn't interact with you. That's why a Kiln Fiend deck has to build around this vulnerability with tools for protecting it from a removal, like Apostle's Blessing and Mutagenic Growth, and for overcoming blockers like Crash Through and Teamer Battle Rage. But consistent with the Glass Cannon archetype, these powerful sorceries and instants are only useful if there's a Kiln Fiend on the board. Otherwise, they're dead cards. The deck requires patience of not playing Kiln Fiend until you can protect it. So something about the discipline of having Kiln Fiend is that we can't play it until we can protect it. And that means we can't play it until next turn. And sometimes protecting it isn't enough. Ooh. Okay, I gotta, gotta save it now. Give it protection from red. Of course, they just draw another card. The deck offers opportunities for strategy like luring the removal by feigning a misplay, playing a Kiln Fiend early. My creature. Yeah, usually you wouldn't want to play a creature like Kiln Fiend, which is one of the best creatures in our deck, but very vulnerable, without um, protection. And I had some protection there I actually could have used. But we have so many Kiln Fiends in our hand that it's okay. And when the conditions favor it, you can blow out your opponents. Alright, we're gonna play land for turn. We're gonna crash through. Great spell, just to get things moving here. We're gonna Lava Dart the opponent. Okay, they're tapped out to draw a card, which means we can go all in. Famous last word sometimes, but we're gonna do it. Funny, if they had kept the mana up, I wouldn't have done that. But now we have 18 damage coming in, and yeah, <laughs> they can't block it. As a chemist, my day job is highly ordered and risk averse. Azorius, if you will. The scientific method lends itself to necessitating high reproducibility. Playing a glass cannon deck is a great intellectual respite from this because it has valuable lessons about taking risks and chasing passion. Just like in magic, life is full of uncertainty and there are no guarantees of success. For this reason, Kiln Fiend decks feel like an exercise in playing my best with available information and letting go of outcome dependence if fortune doesn't favor me. But sometimes the meta just doesn't favor your favorite deck. 
I was hoping to bring Popper Kilmfiend to Magic Con Minneapolis, but it's so unfavored in the meta that I'd likely not do well. You can watch me go 2-8 with it on livestream in the description. Whether a deck is good or bad is relative to how well it can perform against other decks. But when is a Kilmfiend deck favored? I asked my favorite aggro pilot, Jim Davis, for his input. Our pilot says, what kind of meta favor all in aggro decks? Like, what kind of meta games favor, favor all in aggro decks? Very linear meta games. They're not playing a lot, of, a lot of kill spells. A lot of decks like Tron, just like kind of trying to ramp or do their thing. When a glass cannon deck like Kiln Fiend is favored, it means that the other decks have a hard time interacting with it and establishing an early board state. Glass cannon archetypes serve the purpose of a clock in the meta. It sets a boundary on the number of turns a deck needs to be able to interact with their opponents before they'll lose a game. This is true for all aggressive decks, but glass cannons curate for specific removal. Kiln Fiend in particular has a hard time bouncing back from creature removal. I used to play with Kiln Fiend in Modern, but unfortunately it's been power crept out of the format. Currently, Kiln Fiend has a home in Popper, the common only format. Subscribe to be notified on the next video, Glass Cannons Outside of Gaming. Originally, this video essay was going to be a lot longer, but I've decided to split it into three parts because I felt those parts necessitated their own individual videos. You have to choose when to go all in, and you have to be very careful. You have to make plays that are usually bad in other decks, like not playing a creature until turn three if you keep a Kiln Fiend hand.